We are here in a Spanish village this morning to talk with painter and printmaker Maureen Booth. Maureen came to Spain in 1964 with her husband and two small children. She had no idea at that time that she would spend the rest of her life and her career in Spain, eventually taking out Spanish nationality in the mid 80s. Maureen, let's start with a hard question. You've been a working professional painter and printmaker for more than 40 years. Would you say that your best work is still ahead of you or that you've already done it? That is a silly question because every time I start a painting I want to do my best work. Um, I think uh, my best work obviously is in the future. I have great um, uh, hope that uh, I'll get enough time to do those great works. That's, um, that's the problem, time. I mean things have changed so considerably that short of time. <laughs> Maureen, tell us a little bit about how you discovered your interest in creating art and your formation as an artist. Well that's thanks to my grandmother Lucy who lived in Wales and had a big chess when I used to spend time with her. She would every day bring out papers and paints and the house was also full of paintings which I, I really loved. I can remember the paintings still. And, and then when I was 11 years old I had an exam to go into a, a school for creative children and uh, the most important teacher there was the art teacher who used to recite poems and we had to illustrate the poems. Uh, we didn't do copy anything and it was the most creative thing which has stayed with me all my life. I'm, I love poetry and I love to uh, think that my work at its best is poetic. It's interesting that what you consider your best work is the same thing you were doing when you were a child at school. Exactly, yeah. yes. Okay, what about uh, learning to engrave? Well, this was an opportunity that I had when I came to live in Granada. There was a foundation, the Rodriguez Acosta Foundation, who had a wonderful maestro who had learnt etching in Rome. And um, I had to, I was two and a half years. Everything paid, uh, including exhibits and working with international artists, Japanese, Spanish artists. This is where I became involved with the artists in Granada, which uh, has been very important. Printmaking is quite a complicated discipline. <clears throat> How do you manage to combine that with painting? That's a difficult question. It's also difficult to, to do. Uh, I have this studio, which is a beautiful studio, good light, and I have to do everything in this studio, which uh, does make it complicated. Because if I have a big commission, um, uh, printing commission, I have to take everything out of the studio which is related to painting. And, um, and the same, if I go to paint, I have to cover all the papers and everything and work. That but is I to say, the ideal thing would be two studios. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let's change the subject a bit and talk about your life in Spain. What made you leave the UK and come to Spain in 64 at the age of 24? Did you burn all your bridges? N well, I was bored. I was bored with England because everything was um, uh, kind of set, very set. And, and I wanted freedom. Also, there were too many people in England. It was too... Um, I wanted space. I wanted space and light. And also, I was looking for a warmer climate as well. I think the year before I came to Spain, we had... I think it was the wettest year in England. I think we had two weeks of sunshine. And I said, that's enough. Um, so we decided to come to Spain. And really, I didn't know Spain. I'd been on holiday twice to Barcelona and to the, um, the Catalan coast, and I thought that was Spain. And um, when I arrived, when we decided to sell everything and come and live in Nerja, uh, when I arrived at the Malaga airport, I almost died because of the heat. We came in July and it was like stepping into an oven. And I wondered if I'd done the right thing. <laughs> but uh, So what did you find when you moved into a Spanish fishing tourist village well, in it the wasn't early a, 60s? It wasn't a tourist village then. It was the only people there were 
or the very rich people who'd bought land and made big houses, or the artists. There were writers, poets. Uh, as I wanted to paint, it was a perfect place. It was where I had my first studio and started to paint. I thought it was easy because uh, I sold my first work. All the work I did, I sold. And, uh, and that's where I had my first studio. I rented a, a room in, in Nurcha and, uh, and that's where I started to paint. How did you find the Spanish people? I think the Spanish people I found, it was exciting because it was wild. It was, seemed to be a wild kind of country with a lot of um, human uh, the relationships between the whole village, it was like a big family and they were very generous. Um, I don't know, it was, um, also it was beautiful um, agriculture, I mean it was like a paradise. There were no, um, I think we built one of the first, my husband and I and our s associates built one of the first small apartment blocks, we had 12 apartments and a restaurant um, and I think the um, just the the smells the perfumes the the cheap wine the cheap fish everything was um, it was like very sensual um, also it was gave you a feeling of freedom because you were away from all the um, English uh, customs and the family and it was a place where one grew tremendously because, okay. of, because of this freedom. In 1969, you moved to Granada. Did you find a big change from the Marga Well, by coast? the time 69 happened, uh, tourism was starting. And I was getting fed up with um, all the, well, there were all different nationalities, but I was fed up with not knowing Spain. I mean, in Nerja it was the uh, waiters, the uh, construction workers, the people who were selling property, and I wanted to know, get inside Spain and uh, learn, and get to know people who were doing things, in interesting things. Which is in fact what happened when we came to Granada. It was a small village, but in Granada itself there were writers, photographers, poets, painters, and I became friends with all of these interesting people. Okay, we're running out of time now. Please tell us if you have a presence on internet. Can people find you on internet? I do, thanks to my husband, <laughs> who is a, a web master. <laughs> I'm, uh, I have my own web page, which is maureenbooth.com. Uh, I also am in World Printmakers, which is a page that uh, we founded together about uh, eight or nine years ago, which has a presence, which has uh, printmakers from all over the world. I'm also in a web page, Spanish web page called uh, Libro de Artista dot earl? Info. Info, dot info. It's hard to remember all these things. And also I'm in the Saatchi Gallery, yeah? And Flickr. I'm now in Flickr, yes, which is um, exciting, yeah. Okay, last question. Dear to your heart, you have six grandchildren. Do you see signs that any of them might be serious artists? Well, I'm very excited about Elisa, who's 19, and she's in doing fine arts. Uh, she's learning to paint, photography. She's done etchings with me and painted with me. And the, uh, I have uh, twins. And one of them, Alejandro, uh, does paintings and etchings with me and loves to come in my studio. I think there's two out of the six, I think there's two. None of my uh, children are artists, although Tanya seems to be coming out as an editor. And my son, who's a geologist, also now takes to photographing insects all over the world. And um, I think my husband's actually writer, he's a writer, he's just written, a, I think he's written two books in the last couple of years and also dedicates his time to uh, supporting me. Thanks to him, I'm, um, he does all my correspondence and all my, all my photography. And, okay, uh, thanks yeah. very much. <laughs> thanks for talking with us. Good it's luck. It's been a pleasure.
Okay.